Hi, church family. We love you. Have a happy Mother's Day. Hi, Glendora Vineyard Church family. We miss you and love you. From the Cantu, stay safe. We hope to see you all soon. Uh, hey, Vineyard Church family. Kevin here. Just wanted to say hi, and then I miss you all dearly. Looking forward to this Sunday that we're all back together soon. Love you all. Hear my prayers and thoughts. We'll be together soon. Good morning, church family. This is Kathy. And I am. Welcome to our backyard. We enjoy sharing our backyard with other people. We enjoy being in the secluded little corners ourselves and alone, uh, but we more enjoy sharing it with other people. You know, we really miss you. We miss being able to see you, being able to talk face to face, being able to touch you. But soon enough, it will be over and we will be able to be back at church. And we're looking forward, we're looking very much forward to that moment when we can be together again. Hey everyone, Thompson family coming at you. Just wanted to say how much we love and miss you all at uh, Vineyard Church Glendora and we can't wait to see you guys again soon. Yes, hopefully this quarantine will be over and we'll be able to see each other again. Miss you. Bye. Miss you. Bye. Hi. Good morning, Vineyard Church Glendora. My name's Norma Ross, and I just want to say I miss you guys so much, and I'm hoping that we can get together real soon. In the meantime, um, take care, be safe, and um, love you guys so much. Bye. Good morning, church. Welcome to Vineyard Church Glendora's online church service quarantine pandemic week number who knows, right? It's all starting to blur together in my mind. Hey, if you are joining us online for the first time this morning, it is a gift of the Holy Spirit. I'm so glad you are. Go ahead and click on the I'm new link and someone will reach out to you later this week. We'd love to get to know you a little bit better. Hey, happy Mother's Day to all of our moms who are joining us online this morning. Some of the children in our church put together a little video uh, Mother's Day blessing, and we're going to air it later this afternoon at 2 p.m. from this same live stream link. So check in with your kids. If they participated in this Mother's Day blessing, please join us back here 2 p.m. later this afternoon. So we are in stage two of reopening up our communities. We are on our way to seeing one another once again, gathering together once again, but you need to know that churches are actually in stage three. So not so fast, right? Hey, get on our church email list if you're not, or be checking your email regularly if you are, because we're gonna be updating you with the plan as we know it, as we get information, but stay tuned for that. And if that raises any anxiety in you as you consider re-engaging or going back out, I want you to know that we are in this together. We're going to take it one step at a time. We're not rushing to do anything. We're in it together. And I know that God is going to give us the grace that we need to do what we need to do in our time of need. So it is a beautiful day. God is present and God is at work in our lives and in the life of this church. Pastor Rainier Cruz is going to lead us in a time of worship together right now and I invite you to make yourself available to what God wants to do in your life right here, right now. Dance around the room, stand up, sit down, kneel, do whatever you need to do, but come church, let us worship the Lord together. Good morning church. Good morning. As we enter in our time of worship, let us posture ourselves into His presence. Let's surrender our thoughts, you know, our mind and our spirit. And let's welcome Jesus into our lives and be present with God this morning. I'd like us to just gather around right now and, you know, just boldly express our worship to Jesus and just use this time just to sing with our hearts and just hearts filled with gratitude to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's do that. Yes, God. We welcome you, Lord. We come to join the song. So long be. 
voice in heaven singing worthy God, you're worthy, Lord Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Psalm 145, verse 1 through 9. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty. And I will meditate on your wonderful works. They tell of the power of your awesome works and I will proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. We worship you, Lord. So God of our martyrs and funds. God of our martyrs and funds. Come now
bless you, Lord. Amen. Good morning. Today's scripture reading comes from Philippians chapter 1, verses 12 through 8, and this is taken from the NIV. Verse 12. Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and declare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. It is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so out of love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I am in chains. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. This is the word of the Lord. Well, good morning, church. So good to be with you again this morning. And hey, we are officially in phase two, California. Can you believe it? Hiking trails are opening up again this weekend, as are florists and sporting good and book and toy stores for curbside pickup only, remember, because, because how else are we going to get our books and our toys? I don't know. I'm guessing most of you have already phoned in your order of Harry Potter and a box of Legos to go, so go for it. Um, it's also Mother's Day, so uh, happy Mother's Day to all of you. Certainly a Mother's Day like we've never seen before. Today, um, today we're going to take the next step. Uh, let's go ahead and call it phase four in our end of the spring safer at home quarantine series that we're calling good news from isolation because we are not the first to experience a little unexpected and longer than assumed isolation and we are not the first needing a little bit of good news in the midst of it if you're uh, just joining us for the first time or found us online welcome to you uh, we have been spending our time in this series reading Paul's letter to a bunch of followers of Jesus that live in a Roman colony called Philippi. This, this letter appropriately named Philippians, and, and we've made it so far all the way to verse 12. Now, let me tell you, it is my sincere hope and prayer that we end up finish this, finishing this letter together in person, sitting in a circle, sipping coffee and consuming large amounts of empty carbs. And to that end, we hope and we do pray. But today we're going to plow forward uh, all the way to verse 18. You've already heard the scripture read by my friend Gabriel Lee. Thank you, Gabriel, for doing that. And so let's dive in, shall we? Uh, this Paul, who's the author of this letter, uh, he is the isolated one. He's, he's writing from a Roman jail for his unwillingness to stop talking about the good news of a resurrected Savior named Jesus Christ, who is, in fact, restoring all things. And, and what he gives his readers and what he gives us today, I believe, is a bit of perspective. And so I want to spend a minute talking about that word, perspective. Perspective is about how we see something, isn't it? It's about our point of view. And I happen to believe that it is our perspective that has the ability to change our perceived reality. Um, here's what I mean. Take a look at this photo. What are you seeing or what do you think you're seeing from this perspective? If you're guessing a rock or a rock wall, you would be correct from, from one perspective. But from another perspective, you're your reality of that or your experience and reality of that rock uh, wall might change a bit. Here, here's another picture of the same rock from a slightly different perspective. I ask you, does your perspective make a difference? As you're seeing it now from a bit higher perspective, you're actually finding out, wait, that rock or that rock wall that I saw in the first photo, that's actually the, that's actually the Grand 
canyon, and it's absolutely amazing. Now, now let me actually show you that that same uh, f that same rock and, and and canyon from an even higher. This is that same uh, canyon from thirty five thousand feet, an even higher perspective. And, and you can see that that the canyon, which looks pretty grand. It's even grander than you might have thought, and it, and it twists and it winds beautifully and seemingly without end. I would call Paul's perspective on his current situation and current life context, I would call it like a high-altitude, 35,000-foot perspective. He's, yes, he's staring a canyon wall in the face right before him. He, he's, his future looks pretty bleak. He's actually probably chained to that wall. And, and he's sitting there, and, and quite likely, he's probably not going anywhere, chained to that wall until the empire executes him. And, and so who would blame him if from that perspective, he didn't just bemoan life a little bit? But that's not what we get, is it? Instead, we find another perspective. Let's call it a, a higher perspective that, that twists and winds beautifully, seemingly, without end. L listen again to that perspective and, and how Paul describes it to his Philippian friends. In verse 12, he says, Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. As a result, it's become clear throughout the whole palace garden to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. Paul wants his friends to know that what has happened to him, let's, let's be honest, it wasn't good. That, that what has happened which was unexpected and unfortunate and anxiety-producing and lonely and was certainly not the way he expected the year to go, that, that what has happened, which was completely outside of his control, that, that what has happened, which has caused him to completely pivot fr from his uh, normal life as a traveling apostle and missionary to essentially a letter writer chained to a Roman jail cell, that what has happened to him is actually turning out to have some unexpected good attached to it. Because the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, he says, is being advanced in some unexpected kind of ways. Now, I, now I gotta say, I wish this ancient letter had a, a little bit more applicable relevance to us today. If we, who know nothing about unexpected, uncontrollable, uncomfortable, anxiety-producing isolation, we who are totally sure where this year is going and what's going to be happening by the end of it. You see, Paul's perspective. Paul's perspective is completely counterintuitive. And yet, I believe it's exactly what we need today. Because Paul's perspective is essentially this. It's all good. You know, guys, it's, it's actually going to be okay. And, and he can only say that, and I believe we can only say that too. Because Paul is leaning in to a strong, higher altitude perspective, which is this. That our God has a long, long history of bringing good out of unexpected and even unfortunate circumstances. I wonder if sitting in that Roman prison, Paul isn't remembering some of the stories he's likely memorized since he was a boy. Stories from the Hebrew scriptures, stories about others that he can probably relate to, stories like Joseph and, and the tail end of Genesis 50 who also uh, was experiencing something unexpected, sold as a slave by his brothers. He ends up spending time in an Egyptian prison, uh, unjustly accused. But by the end of the story, what we find is this same Joseph is saying uh, things like this to his brothers. Genesis 50, verse 19, he says, Don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? 
You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. And so maybe Paul is simply falling back on a long, long list of others, of people who have experienced God bringing unexpected good out of something that is not good out of something that is difficult, out of a problem, out of an unfortunate season or situation. Or maybe there in prison, Paul is reflecting on the life and the ministry of Jesus, this Jesus that he proclaims to the Roman guards. And maybe his perspective is steeled and is buoyed by the, the story of Jesus, who also is, also is falsely accused and who is, who is tragically put to death by the empire. And yet, there's still more to the story. That's not the end. There's more goodness, and there's more lives to be saved. Because once again, what we find is God swallows and, and redeems the worst of the worst. Yes, even death. And unexpectedly brings goodness and life bursting forth three days later. You see, I believe Paul is absolutely convinced of what he wrote a few lines earlier in verse 6 when he told the Philippians that God always completes what God begins. He's convinced that in the midst of this difficult present circumstance, it's a, there is some unexpected good being accomplished here and that new life and light is actually bursting forth from his dark prison cell. I mean, I mean how many Roman guards are getting to hear the story of another king not named Caesar. And how many of those Roman guards are actually putting their, their faith in the good news of Jesus Christ? We'll never know. And, and he references this, but how many other believers have witnessed what has happened to him? And they're also seeing it from a higher perspective. And, and, it's, and so they are inspired to share the good news with others as well. They're, they're, they've seen the impact that it's having on hardened Roman soldiers. And, and this, in fact, is giving them renewed boldness and renewed confidence to talk with their neighbors or maybe the person standing six feet behind them in line. Because, you see, your perspective can change everything and everyone, can't it? You, you can stare headlong at the canyon wall. You can only see the chains and what you feel chained to. You, you, you can see what's plaguing you and stare at what's causing you discomfort or making you anxious or, or what seems to have no light at the end of the tunnel. And you can choose to only see darkness and despair. You can make that the end of the story. Or you can choose to go a bit higher in your perspective. And you can have the same robust confidence that we see in Joseph and in Jesus and in Paul and a long, long list of others throughout the ages who have put their confidence and their trust, not always in what they're seeing right in front of them, but in God's sovereign resurrecting power to bring goodness and beauty out of the slog. And so I ask you this morning, do you need a change of perspective? Maybe a perspective from a slightly higher altitude. I'll tell you this, most, most news cycles and, and social media stories that I see shared are shot from a pretty low altitude. And so let's be, let's be a counterintuitive community that consistently reminds people that what has happened even now is not the end of the story. Let's be, let's be a community that, that doesn't deny or minimize or ignore what has happened, that the, the very real human disappointment and loss and pain, but believes it doesn't have to be the end. A community that is rooted and is established and is propelled uh, into the world by, by the story of new life bursting forth even in the midst of death. A community that has really no idea where this is all going, but knows 
knows that it's going to be okay because they've gone all in with a God who promises to always complete every good work he begins. You know, personally, at one level or from, from one perspective, I, I have never been more uncertain about the future. And if I stay at that level and that perspective for too long, uh, it can take me uh, to some anxious places, some other thoughts, some other feelings begin to surface. And yet, I have found that when I stand, when I stand on the backs of those like Joseph and Paul and, of course, Jesus, I see from another perspective. And because of that, I can honestly say that there is an excitement welling up in me. I, I, I begin to wonder, how is the gospel, how is the good news going to be advanced through what has happened to us? And, and what are we going to be marveling at years from now as we look back at what has happened at this part of, of the year 2020 and we simply give God glory? And so be encouraged this, this morning. And if, and if your perspective needs to go a little higher, jump on the same backs and take a look again and enjoy the view because it's pretty grand. Now, last thought. Had Paul not been in that Roman prison, then he never writes this prison letter to a bunch of followers of Jesus, uh, that, and, and he never tells them that the good news marches on, even in the midst of isolation and unfortunate circumstances. Which means that this letter never gets canonized in Holy Scripture and never gets included in the Bible that we read from today, which means that it never ends up encouraging some followers of Jesus facing their own isolation and uncertain future in the year 2020, that no matter what has happened, the good news of Jesus Christ marches on today. Now that is is some seriously high altitude perspective. And maybe that's exactly what we need today. Hey Vineyard Kids and Vineyard Youth. I hope you guys are doing super well. I am here in Newport Beach, California with my family this weekend. I hope your Sunday is going great so far. I just wanna share a quick message on perspective. So I know that right now you guys are all at home and you're probably thinking, how long is this going to last? Oh my gosh, I've been here for so long in my room, or I've been watching movies or playing video games or just doing so much homework and it's painful. Um, and sometimes being with family could be hard because you guys could butt heads, right? And so maybe you're like, I just need to get away for a little bit. Like, when is this going to end? And um, I know that the perspective could seem pretty rough. It's like, wow, this is horrible. Or maybe you're an introvert and maybe like, this is amazing. I've been waiting for this moment in my life. But it, if it's becoming um, just a lot and you're like, man, I don't know if I can handle this anymore. I challenge you really to think about perspective. Now I know that the perspective right now is, oh my goodness, maybe you can't even graduate and that's like, ah, oh, this is crazy, this is so hard. And that is actually super hard. And you're just like, what is going on? But the cool thing is that I've actually seen a lot of um, things around that I actually have thought have been really cool. One of those things is that I see a ton of people hanging out um, with their families, right? And even though they can't be with other people, I see tons of people going for walks, they're exercising, and maybe they couldn't exercise as much before because of work. And, and yeah, and then even just seeing people play with their kids outside, like I just mentioned, there's so many different ways where I'm like, wow, this is so cool. Maybe there's just downtime where you could start a new craft. I know that there's a couple of our youth who are starting some new crafts or uh, even just things that they've wanted to do that they haven't been able to do because they have all this extra time, right? And so we're actually going to learn a little bit more about perspective from our Vineyard Kids Director, Ashley. So Ashley, take it away from Ventura, California. Good morning, Vineyard Kiddos. Can you guess what this is? What do you think? Let's pull back and see if we can guess it. I'll go slow, 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 slow. It's
it's a sweater. You guys, you might not have been able to tell up close what this is, but when we zoomed out and got some perspective, you could see that it's one of my favorite sweaters. So why did I show you my sweater up close? It's because I wanted to tell you a little bit about perspective. And you see what we're talking about today, what Paul's talking about is so beautiful that even in suffering, we can celebrate, that we can be gracious, that we can have gratitude. And I want to encourage you guys today to look at your circumstance and zoom out a little bit. For example, even in my own life right now, I've I really miss you guys. I really miss my friends. I miss the warm embraces of people in my community. However, I am so thankful for Zoom. I'm so thankful for the ways that we've been able to connect in new ways. I was able to even have a Zoom with some of my friends that I haven't seen in years. And we all got together. And through this experience, we've been able to really connect in deeper ways. I've heard stories of people connecting more with their neighbors, people giving more, people serving more and helping more. And so I just want to really reflect on that with you guys to zoom out a little bit and so that even in suffering, even in pain, when things hurt and we have boo-boos, that we could zoom out and celebrate the love of people taking care of us, that we could celebrate people serving, that we can celebrate people helping, um, and celebrate that the love of Jesus is being spread right now as people serve, as people give their time, as people give their lives to help during this pandemic. So I just wanted to do that little activity with you guys on zooming out to see if you can get some perspective. There's a lot of things you could do this with. I just want to encourage you guys to do this at home. Take an object, take a zoomed in picture of it, try to guess what it is, a friend or sibling guess what it is, and then zoom out and see how much perspective truly matters. That even in our suffering, even in our lament, there's still space um, to celebrate what's going on around us, to still celebrate what God is doing um, even so. I love you guys so much and I miss you. I hope that activity was fun for you. Bye then your kiddos. I'd love to see this week some ways that you take perspective into account in your own life. Um, and I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your week. We're gonna get through this together. Wow, thank you so much, Ashley, for that message, all the way from Ventura, California. And today I challenge you guys to really think about your perspective. Are you getting frustrated and angry and like, why is this happening? If you are, I challenge you to think about the same thing one more time. What, is, what are some good things that are happening in the experience that you're going through? What are some things that you could just look around, ask God for a new perspective, see if he'll show you something good about the situation you're in? And we're about to play a game really quick. I challenge you to do it with your whole family right now. I'm gonna show a picture really zoomed in and see if you can guess what that item is. And so, here we go guys. See if you could get them all. Let us know if you can. All right, have a great Sunday. Love you all so much. Happy Mother's Day. Los Angeles is considered to be a highly polluted city. On any given day here in Glendora, when you go up to a higher elevation, it's a question as to whether or not you'll actually be able to see downtown Los Angeles from here. But with the reduction of carbon emissions since the safer at home restrictions, every time I come up to a higher elevation here, I can see it every time. It's like crystal clear. You know, seismologists have even studied that there's been a 30 to 50% reduction in ambient seismic noise. That means that the earth, it's actually vibrating less. So in the midst of this unfortunate circumstance, the earth is actually having this unique opportunity to heal and to rest. You know, from one perspective, there is pain and suffering, but from another perspective, there's healing. Our teaching reminded us this morning that the gospel is always advancing. It could not be held back by a Roman prison cell and it cannot be held back by a pandemic. 
The mission of God is relentless. It's always being released and it cannot be confined by our human limitations or by our suffering. So I invite you to consider with me for a moment, where are you seeing the gospel advance? You know, Paul names it. He brings language to it in his letter. And it's so important that we name it too, that we share the stories, that we see them at work. You know, in the last several weeks, I have heard some beautiful stories from you, my church community, about neighbors coming together in ways that you've never come together before. I've heard stories of walls coming down in the workplace. I've heard stories of family members reaching out and communicating after months, maybe even years of not communicating. But where are you seeing the gospel advance? Let's name it. And if you can't see the gospel advancing right now because all you can see is the wall right in front of you, all you can see is, is the smog, maybe it's the fear in your life or, or the worry, maybe it's a hard financial situation or a relationship that you're struggling in, if all you can see is the wall right in front of you right now, I want you to know that God loves you. And wouldn't it be nice to always be able to have perspective but we just don't all the time, do we? It takes a tremendous amount of faith and trust to recognize that God is always at work in our lives, even when we don't see it. And so if that's you right now, if you can't see beyond the wall right in front of you, I invite you this week to take a moment to simply pull back, take a step back from the wall, you know that's all that Paul was doing when he wrote a letter about the gospel advancing in prison from prison? Is he was just stepping back. He was acknowledging that there was a bigger story at work in prison. So take a moment this week, pull back, ask for prayer right now. You can click on the button and somebody is ready to pray a prayer of faith over you. I encourage you this week, tell stories, name them, use your words to share ways that you have seen the gospel advancing in your life and in the world around you. Even if they're stories from the past, share them, tell them. Pay attention to the stories around you of the gospel advancing. This has been so important to me in this season to hear stories of the way God is moving, God's love and God's wholeness forward in this season. They're so encouraging to me. But however you need to this week, pull back from the wall. You know, when we do this, we find that God's story is always advancing toward wholeness, toward goodness, and toward restoration. Church, God is for us, and God is with us. Until we meet again, grace and peace to you.